Okay, three, two, one, we are live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Leo. Hi, Dini. Uh, give me one second here. We'll check something real quick and we'll get started. Okay. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another interview live with Leo at five. And today I have an amazing guest. Um, her name is Dini Burns, and she has over 10 years of tech experience in project management and in sales, and over three years as a educational leader, uh, opening schools and writing grants. Um, super, super uh, grateful for her work. And um, she's in charge of data and analytics. And she's extremely passionate about uh, education and history and tech. And so um, I want to welcome her and would like her to kind of introduce herself and fill in, um, you know, what we should know about her. So go right ahead. Thank you, Leo. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me to your show. This is really innovative and forward thinking of you and I'm super excited to be here. So um, yes, I have been in education in the past and I am still in technology, very passionate about technology and actually using it in the self storage industry today. I am the national sales director for Tenet Inc. And we're actually blazing new trails in technology um, using our global distribution system, which we're the first to do that in self storage, uh, similar to what Amazon and the airlines use to customize your user experience. Um, so when you log on to Amazon, you might um, get a customized experience. I just bought a new house. And so when I log on, it, it gives me housewares and different things in my color scheme and content that I might like. Well, we're doing that in self storage. Um, so it's really exciting. We just launched our new software, Hummingbird, and it's blazing new trails. It's unlike anything anyone's seen. So it's kind of like introducing a new ride at Disneyland when everyone's like, ooh, and ah, it's amazing. And so it's super fun. Um, so thank you for inviting me to your show. And um, I just want to say during this time, super important to utilize technology for contactless. So we're doing that with self-storage rentals, but I want to say in regards to uh, real estate that I was actually one of the first to this home that I bought, I bought over video. And um, so with eSign, I was able to sign a lot of the documents uh, electronically, which was really nice. And uh, we're also implementing that in self-storage so someone can rent online verify their identity, e-sign, everything move in, do a complete move in without seeing anybody. And I really feel like that's the wave of the future for many industries. So I'm super excited about it um, because it provides optimal health, optimal security and safety. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about how technology is revolutionizing industries. Absolutely. I, I think you touched on um, quite a few things that, in there, but I just want to say you know, kind of reiterate one one quick thing is that, you know, um, in the past, so many things um, that we would do on a normal basis um, that had been a, a complicated process is now totally had been simplified just by the means of communication we have and the ability to verify and uh, do secure uh, signatures and um, have technologies, 3D technologies to be able to view and see things. Um, and walk through um, at your own leisure and ask any questions and email communications are super, super reliable. So the, uh, the streamlining of everything is really, really come a long way. Now, I have to say, you know, being in real estate and you can attest to this also because you've been in tech for so long, all of these things have been either in development or have already been available for many, many years, but not until now do we really start to feel like, you know, this is a, a, a now a, a need because before this, we were able to feel safe going into any building, interacting with anybody, 
Um, but now we're feeling like, hey, you know, now there's a need that we actually uh, could do this without the need for that to keep all of us safe during times like these. And so as practitioners, we all know like, hey, we just jump right in, all of these needs to be done. But I think the vast majority of the people out there have not experienced this. So, so this is really great to have you on and kind of just, you know, um, teach people a little bit um, and let them know like these processes used to be very complicated. Um, are now can just be done, you know, right in front of a computer, right in front of a laptop, like we're already doing right now. Exactly. Yep. And in regards to education, I was in education before and, you know, distance learning has been around for about 20 years and the traditional educational community kind of scoffed at it, laughed at it and said, no, brick and mortar is the only way to go. Well, I think we're realizing that there, there is all their alternatives and yes, the in-person interaction is very important. But in a situation like this, you need to have um, an alternative way for people to still educate and especially children. And maybe in the go forward, there's a hybrid or, or something, but um, online is here to stay. And so I applaud you for what you're doing. And um, I've been having to take on and do more online meetings and we're all getting used to that. And, and I'm kind of adopting it. I'm kind of, I'm enjoying it. I still, I still want in-person interaction, but you know, in these cases, this is much better than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think ideally you'll never take away, you know, the, the, the real life in-person uh, meetings. Um, but this kind of takes us to the point where uh, we can have all the information we need and then we can take the personal side and it, it could be very um, effective to build relationship, to communicate. And, you know, these type, type of things with Zoom is so good because now at least we can see you know, um, facial expressions and, you know, things yeah. like that. Or before this, really, we just had voice and phone and stuff like that. And we would have to, like, you know, try to guess, like, what the other person yes. is, um, you know, <laughs> emoting and stuff, like, just by their voice. Mm -hmm. And it's such a lack, you know, we, now, now that we have Zoom and Zoom is on everything, we can pick up our phone, we can do FaceTime, we can do all that kind of stuff. That just bridges, you know, the really the final gap. And um, I think it's really great what you did. Uh, going through the process of purchasing your home and um, I'm always trying to let people know like hey all those things that we used to do was not not really necessary it was just a lot of things that people had you were used to doing in-person right. signings and in-person you know viewing and in-person inspections and all that kind of stuff now with the communication you really don't have to you can get all the information you need it just can, takes getting a little used to that you know some some things are gotten so easy we have to get used to it it, yeah. took, it took amazon 10 years for us to get used to you know just ordering online because if you remember in the beginning everybody was like well i don't want to order online i like to see and touch and i want to know what i'm buying i want to be able to know where i can return it you know, but all that stuff has yeah. now been streamlined too so it just takes getting some used to and i think we're we're this just speeds up the the progress like um you know with the current events that are happening oh absolutely i mean you think of technology and i remember having the blackberry and um, everyone called it the Crackberry because everyone was on their Blackberries. And then I went to an iPhone and it was like dragging my feet. And then as soon as I adopted the iPhone, I thought, what did I ever do without the iPhone? You know, and online grocery shopping, uh, there were modules. I don't know if you remember around Orange County about 20 years ago. And um, it fell flat because no one saw the need for it. Now, obviously, I think we all realize there's a need for it. And so definitely models are going to innovate and evolve and we're going to be forced to adopt them. And, um, you know, I think in many cases, it's, a, it's, it's time. It's time to innovate and to change and to be forward thinking. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I see a few people jumping on here. Um, if you're uh, on live with us, just go ahead and put a comment um, with the word live so that we know you're there. And um, if you're watching the replay, just go ahead and put the word replay in there so we know you're watching in the replay. And at any given time that you're watching this, whether it's live or not, um, if you have some questions that uh, come to mind, feel free to put it in the chat. And uh, if we're still live here, we can uh, maybe um, you know, engage with Dini and have her answer a few questions. Um, so um, Dini, uh, how did you tell us a little bit of your, your history and your journey 
of getting into what you do and, and how, what got you into uh, being so passionate? Because I think, you know, education and technology really go hand in hand. Um, but um, how did you kind of work your way um, into this where you're so passionate about? It? Yeah, great question. Thank you. So um, I believe I've always been passionate about technology, even in high school. I love data and analytics and technology. And um, for fun, I took a data analytics, um, Excel spreadsheet type of um, class in high school, just in the summertime, just for fun. And um, and then, you know, all throughout school, I was learning how to program on Apple, like, you know, all the other kids and just really fell in love with technology. Um, I moved out to Orange County and got a job at Ingram Micro, which is a huge technology distributor, $40 billion company. And um, working there, I got to work on some great projects like a buy.com project um, that was a fee-for-service project. And worked in the global sales department and various components. So I learned about technology. It was a very exciting environment. That's one thing I like about technology. It's always changing and evolving. And so you walk into the office, something new each and every day. I like change um, and I like, I'm a disruptor. I like to find areas to uh, refine and technology allows for that. It's always moving rapidly. So I enjoyed that. And then when my kids got into school, I stepped back and retired for a number of years and was a stay at home mom. Then um, their school hired me and uh, I became in charge of the data and analytics grants department, social media, press and opening new schools. Uh, so opened um, a, new, a new school and uh, working on a new, an, a, another school, but I was in charge of the CalPAD Seabeds data and analytics department. So I've always loved data and analytics and the stories that it tells um, and how it helps us. Um, so anyways, uh, that's how I was involved with education. And then I got involved with self-storage and software and technology and self-storage, really loved the people, learned to love the industry and just really adopted it as my own and now innovating in self-storage. So. It's been a fun journey and learned a lot, done a lot. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about the future. Yeah, I think that's super interesting. I think, um, so you entered into the, uh, to the tech world through Ingram Micro. And I, um, I personally have worked in tech and we had talked before um, for, for 10, 15 years. And so I'm very well aware of Ingram Micro and I had previous friends that have worked there as well. Um, and uh, they, there's, uh, they've been around for such a long time. And back in the day, they had, you know, been um, on the edge of technology where they're distributing, you know, and uh, creating partnerships and continue to uh, stay uh, on top of all the technology. And from there, um, you had, uh, sounds like you had gone into storage because there was a need in technology for storage to streamline their processes and streamline their customer uh, service and customer experience and all this stuff. And that's kind of how you made your way in there, huh? Yes, yes. And I do have to say, um, I did open a school in Atlanta called Liberty Tech. And it was actually a really interesting school as a hybrid between high tech and the classical model of education, which most people think are an antithesis and they contradict one another, but using um, the classical model of education combined with high tech is actually preferable. And there was, it was a, it's a really great learning experience for kids. And so I did want to say that I did um, help start a high tech school and um, data and analytics is very important. It tells a story. So for instance, um, I reviewed grants for uh, the US Department of Education. And um, so I would receive seven, a stack of 17 grants, 100 pages each. And I started reading through them and I realized that um, if I really wanted to get to the meat and potatoes of what they were asking for, you skip past all the fluff and you go to the budget and the budget tells you exactly where they're going to put the money. And it makes it very easy because if they're asking for flat screen TVs and t-shirts and, uh, you know, boardroom equipment for the board of directors, you go, this isn't helping kids get to college. If they're asking for educational curriculum, staffing, books, um, science equipment, you go, okay, 
this is a good grant. This is helping kids get to college. So my point is the numbers and the data and analytics tell a story. And it's usually, it's, it's a truthful story if you analyze it correctly. Um, I think some of this COVID-19 data is being skewed and analyzed um, incorrectly, but that's a whole different conversation, but I love data and analytics. So what, what should people, um, what's, what are some of the things people should know um, in regards to, um, we touched on a few things, um, and I think you're so passionate about um, education. What should people know, because you bring up a really good topic about grants and things like that. There's a lot of people out there who are, um, have kids who are starting to think in their teenage years, they're starting to think about um, applying for grants uh, or getting into college and, you know, of course, the money conversation always comes up. Uh, what should people know so that that would, uh, that some tips or maybe some things that they may not know to help those parents and kids, you know, get into, uh, get in there and get the grants and what are some of the things that, um, uh, steps that they can take? I, you know, um, to be real honest with you, I was involved with that component. That's actually a separate grant. I was more involved with um, the school applying for grants, like federal grants. So that was more like two or $3 million grants um, for science equipment for the school or playground equipment, which is a completely different process than an individual applying. Um, I can tell you that students, even if they have wealthy parents, can still apply for scholarships. It's grade-based and academic-based and they should be well-rounded and they should be in sports and be the ASB president and all of that's really important. But honestly, I wasn't involved with the, uh, the personal component of an individual applying for a grant. I was more applying from an organizational standpoint. Okay, very cool. So that's a level upwards, more like a business to business type of um, exchange. Yeah, yeah, so I was more business to business and that's more of the consumer facing, yep. Right, okay. So um, what are some of the, um, I, think, I think that storage uh, story is really, uh, really, really interesting. So tell us about that project because let's say I'm a consumer and I want to um, rent out storage space. How is it different today versus maybe, you know, three to five years ago, as far as my experience of, you know, getting a, rent, uh, a rental, using it, how do I, get help and you know that kind of that kind of experience what should people expect now because so many of us um, you know need storage uh, for various reasons whether in, they're in between homes whether they're moving out of mm -hmm. state whether they have some things they want to keep but not um, uh, be disturbed and be safe and secure and all that kind of stuff so tell tell us about that yeah, that's a great question. Um, Self-storage is actually evolving um, because millennials are getting more uh, consultant type jobs where they'll work for maybe six months in Austin, six months in New York City, um, especially with like PeopleSoft, Oracle, like high tech jobs, many of them are um, consultant based. And so they need self storage and they'll have, um, they'll rent apartments in various cities and store their furniture. So how it used to be five years ago is someone would Google self storage in, in uh, Texas, let's say Austin, Texas, and they'll find a self storage facility, they'd have to call, make an appointment, they could not move in until they met with someone um, so that they could get their identity verified, they want to see the person and give them a tour of the facility, they would sign a paper agreement, they would get a lock, there was a real lock and a, a gate access code maybe and um, then they would be able to rent. Well, now they could do that all online. So now they find the self storage that has the, um, especially uh, like our web uh, product and they can search for a facility, get a unit, reserve it, um, verify their identity online, put in their credit card number, choose insurance coverage, get a gate access code. And then when they show up in Austin, maybe it's at one in the morning um, with their moving truck or whenever they wanna move in, um, they have their gate access code. Now um, days, even with technology, the Janus no key system, they can download it onto their app, their phone, the gate code, and they could actually scan it. And um, through the Janus no key system, the lock is actually a Bluetooth code 
and they could go up to the unit and hold their phone up to it and it unlocks and the door comes open without needing a gate key. Um, it's all done wirelessly and electronically. And so it's a really cool system um, where they're able to verify their identity, get an e-lease agreement, get a gate code, everything downloads to their phone and they can move in at any time. And so it's kind of cool. They don't really need to meet with anyone now. So millennials love that and people are now adopting it. Yeah, that sounds great. It seems like 100% electronic from beginning to end because they literally show up and know where the address of the storage uh, facility is. They can scan their code to get in um, and then can also scan to um, open up the unit. Yes, correct, yes. And okay. um, they can pay online, manage their account and even reserve a new unit. Okay. So um, it's really great. It's really great technology. It's fun to sell. Yeah, so they, uh, but they, uh, at the facility, they still have security guards and things like that like they do traditionally, or if the, somebody needs help and the door's not opening or things like that? Is that During the okay? day, they'll have an employee um, there. I mean, they need somebody to clean out units, and we're even working on a contactless unmanned uh, move out. So in the future, somebody could possibly move out of their unit, take a picture of it, show it's cleaned, and upload it, and then they don't need someone to check them out. So um the end-to-end -end process is completely um automated for the move in and it will be for the move out and um yes during the day most facilities have an employee on staff to help that's so great i, I can't you know i can see a few of the scenarios because i um i do you know i'm showing homes all the time i'm doing it in person i'm, I'm opening up doors we have our super keys um and that goes for not just home purchase, but also home uh, leases as well. And a lot of times they are also condos that are um, inside, you know, the multi-unit condos that are inside of buildings. And we have to get keys and gates through the, you know, the lobby and sometimes they're there and that. So I can already see that the storage industry could really pave a path for the rest of us in, in real estate, you know, for some of those scenarios, because there's a few things that just can't be done as seamlessly as the storage, you know, companies are doing them right now. So, um, so I'm excited to, to have, you know, more of those things be integrated. Yeah, and I want to say too, the future is really cool. So a couple, two years ago, I was in Europe for a self-storage convention and Sweden is really leading the way. They're using facial recognition so somebody could walk into a store and pick up items off the shelf and be recognized by their face and it automatically charges their credit card. So that's really where the future is going. And I think our stores could implement that. Um, in fact, I was at a United Airlines hub and I walked into a restaurant and they had waiters delivering the food, but you order everything via a kiosk, you pay. Um, I went to buy some toiletries and I just pulled it off the shelf and I scanned it and paid for it. And there was no, um, no one behind a counter per se. And so I could really see the future where maybe you walk into a store and you pull things off the shelf and it recognizes your face and charges your credit card and your email to receipt to make sure it's correct. And you walk out of the store not um, touching anything, touching anyone, having any interaction um, with a clerk. and. Uh, I know we definitely need to move away from that contactless uh, credit card or the credit card machine where you have to, everybody has to use the pen and the stylus. We really need to move away from that and be contactless on that. Yeah, I think you and I had um, kind of had a short conversation about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, now that we're in this pandemic era, you know, um, we, uh, we have, uh, luckily we have this technology already, you know, to be able to, you know, pay with our phone, uh, pay with your watch, um, but there, there's still that old legacy system of punching in the debit uh, number and stuff like that. So, um, I think a lot of the grocery stores have um, have to switch their um, their system to only do a credit card a transaction versus a debit, because you don't need to punch in the code for a credit card transaction. And so right. that way, it'll skip that part, but not everybody is doing it. But we definitely notice that now, like, well, 
if I'm not touching anything else, why do I got to touch this keypad? <laughs> yeah, like at Starbucks, I use, I've been using my Apple Pay forever at Starbucks and you just wave your phone over it and you don't touch anything and it's really nice. So, um, you know, that's really where it needs to be. Yeah, so I um, so wanted to ask you, you're in tech all the time. And so in your, in your job um, and, and in tech, in, in um, education too, I mean, you are, I mean, I, I'm so, I'm, I'm so inspired by you and the things that you do because um, you're, I know how tough it is in tech. It's an extremely, extremely competitive and there's like 200 new things every single day, you know? And so you really have to keep up with it. So you gotta be like really on the go, know what's going on and um, be able to work a new technology on the fly, you know? And I mean, it's usually a, a male dominated you know, industry because of that, because it's so, you know, left brain. And so, um, so what, what, what kinds of things do you do to kind of keep up with your skills, keep up with um, what's going on, what's changing, um, and all that kind of stuff, and, and keep up with everything that has to change in, in both of those industry, industries, whether it's, you know, educational or in, in storage? Right, yeah, good, great question. Um, well, I have to say I've really, I'm not really involved with education anymore, but in regards to storage, um, I use Flipboard. I, I, look, I uh, look on LinkedIn and use Flipboard for technology news. Um, also, um, our CEO of our company is a visionary. He's very much like Steve Jobs. So his mind is always 10 years ahead. So it's fun to follow his lead because he's really leading the charge in technology. Our, our chief marketing officer, um, Beth Austin, she's very forward thinking and leading the way in technology and self-storage. So I get to work around all these great people um, who are really um, blazing trails and it's, part, it's fun to be a part of that project. And uh, we have 60 different engineers on staff and they're all super smart and sharp. So I learn from them every day. So right now I'm really, it's um, OTJ on the job training right now. I do read a lot of tech articles and um, eventually I would like to go back for my master's degree in tech, but right now it's just uh, OTJ. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So what are some of the, uh, just the few different um, technologies that you're, you're kind of like uh, really uh, working and developing on right now? Well, I'm in sales, so I'm not personally working and developing on anything, but we just rolled out our new um, property management software called Hummingbird. It's cloud-based. It works on PC and Apple, variety of devices. And um, so that's really innovative for self-storage, actually, and along with the identity verification and everything else. As far as future developments, I can't release that, so... Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like the spoiler alerts on TV shows. You can't uh, talk about that until uh, you can. Yeah. So anyways, but it's really exciting. I've, I've heard of some of the future developments. And like I did mention about Sweden and the facial recognition. So um, that's something that they're doing that, uh, you know, we could definitely adopt. So it's exciting. Yeah, that's super interesting. I was just, I was just watching on one of the news, um, news outlets. Uh, regarding um, uh, facial recognition for your iPhones. Mm -hmm. So everybody's wearing masks. And so because they're wearing masks, the phones aren't working. They're not, they're mm -hmm. not unlocking. And so now they have to go back to punching the code. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know it's ridiculous, but um, with our software, most people are renting from home and they're not wearing a mask or if they are at the facility, they, you know, and they're outside, then they can just remove the mask to verify their identity. But I hear you yeah. and stores that might be a little bit hard right now. It feels uncomfortable wearing a mask in a store. It's like a couple months ago, you would have been arrested for that or, you know, and so it's just, it's such a topsy turvy world right now. So It'll adjust a little bit, I think, and, and they are going to let up on the uh, mass restriction I've heard in June, but um, a requirement. But uh, as far as moving forward, there are some changes that are going to be a part of the future. Well, great. Well, it's been super great getting caught up with Thank all of these you. things. And um, I think um, everybody should be super excited what the future has to hold. I think one of the good things, there are many, many good things coming out of uh, this uh, COVID situation. But um, one of the good things is that I think we're all um, 
being able to use and appreciate you know, technology that's here right now that can help us and keep us safe and not having to uh, do all the things that, that, that requires contact and that we can uh, utilize those technology now um, to be able to do, uh, you know, do things safely. Where if, we, if this happened 10 years ago, we would not have any of this stuff. We would not have, right. the phones were still you know, in its early stages, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of things, we wouldn't be able to do the payments you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's super, super exciting. I think you should all take advantage of that. If you're not on Apple Pay, get on Apple Pay. Yes. You know? <laughs> and you know, just so you know, you can also like the Apple Watches, you can pay with your Apple Watches as well. Mm -hmm. um, so now with the Apple Watches having uh, their own uh, cell signal and cell data, you can actually pay even if you don't have your phone. So awesome. yeah, so and, it's super uh, awesome. Leo, I would just wanted to share a quote with um, some of your listeners that I know it's tough times right now, but there uh, is hope. You know, I believe that they, they are starting to let up on uh, some of the restrictions. And I just want to encourage everybody with a quote, uh, one of my favorites by Winston Churchill, never give in, never, 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 and nothing great or small, larger petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. So I just want to wish everyone well and say, persevere, we got this, we're Americans, we can make it through this together and we will come out stronger and better. I love it, I love it. I love how you, I even love how you deliver that. Um, it's so great to have that to, um, to have to think about and, 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 and start our weekend, kick off our weekend with such a great quote from you. And um, so we talked a lot about um, the great work that you've done previously with education and getting grants for people, super, super important. Um, we talked about uh, the technology of the future is here now. Um, yeah. and any kind of real estate in, in, in um, storage, which I consider real estate as well. Yep. Um, and uh, that you get to work in such exciting and fast paced you know, industry. So I think all of us you know, have a chance um, unfortunately, if you had lost your job for whatever reason, that because of it was uh, it was dependent on brick and mortar, now is a really good time to kind of see what opportunities are out there for you to do things uh, more digitally, to be yeah. able to, because there's so much need. I mean, mm -hmm. the technology just continues to move. So there's a lot of opportunities there. So it's a good time to look in that direction and see if it's something that you can do to continue you know, your career you know, in another direction. So thank you so much, Dini, for being yeah. here. Thank you. Bless you, Leo. Appreciate it. Bye, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Um, thank you for uh, joining me. And um, if you guys like this stuff, um, I am here live for you Monday through Friday with a different guest with a different topic. And um, I try to uh, bring in uh, local people in our community who are um, business owners, entrepreneurs, um, uh, forward thinkers uh, such as Dini. And so join me Monday through Friday, five o'clock, Facebook Live, live with Leo at five. So I will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.